usually people say, all oh, right, so what is it like? It's like a BMX then. You use ramps and stuff. You go, no, no, <laughs> it's not. I usually just say, oh, my mate's got this barn. He's got tires, he's got logs, everything. We just build obstacles. I try and explain that to them and then say, we, we try and overcome the obstacles. You overcome the obstacle without putting your feet down. Basically, you've just got to stay on your tires and nothing else. People say, where's your seat gone? Or how do you ride that stood up with no seat and all that sort of stuff? And We've had bother in the past, police and all sorts. And like, and then you get told to go to skate parks and things and you can't go on a skate park in one of these. So you just feel like there's nowhere to go. So that's what brought this on a little bit. I've got the grind out as well, Lewis, you can grind that room. Oh, really? Yeah, it's charged and everything. I hate grinding rooms. Oh, you probably just get George to do it for you, didn't you? Yeah, well, you do it for me, No. Oh, that's good. I'd like to do a bit of bike maintenance before we start. No, I rode the motor trials bike. I think that's most people saw. I started on the motor trials bikes, and uh, like I've been on motor, motor trials bikes since about eight, probably. Uh, my dad didn't when he was a kid, so that's why he got me into it. But uh, I did it for a few years, but I never really took onto it as much as I took onto the pedal bikes. It's getting places. So you have to have a van. We didn't have a van. Getting in the van, getting on a trailer, and I think a lot like your dad has to be with you. You can't go anywhere without your dad. Especially when you're a kid, you can't fix a motorbike. It's too heavy and too. There's an engine. There's lots of moving parts. The pedal bikes I can buy myself. I can do all myself and fix myself and. So I think everyone who had a motorbike got a pedal bike and then and I think I just stuck with it. Because once you once you got the bug and you're, you're just annoying them, I want to ride every Sunday, I want to ride every night, I want to ride all the time. And then like when it's raining they can't ride. There was a demand for somewhere to like ride indoors. So I think I don't know I don't know who I first invited round, but it was oh I come to my house, it's a barn. And they're like, you what? Why didn't you say this earlier? I wouldn't have known how to set it up by myself. So they've had to come and say, no, you need to get this, get this, get this. Over the years I've tried loads of different things of like different setups and Begged, borrowed, and thieved of everyone. Railway sleepers, I'm always in luck with railway sleepers because they're so useful in here. Like the big tyres, like I've tried to claim them off big construction yards and the big concrete pipes, like they're, they're broken off construction yards and I've just claimed loads of stuff just to try and just make it what it is. I'd rather go like to here, drop the front wheel, and well, even there, I don't think you get pulled back enough. So I like, pull back and then go. <laughs> Probably about 11, 12 year old, I got my first trials, trials bike, like proper trials bike. And then up until the age of about 15, 16, just constantly out all the time. Every, like every night, every weekend in, in a different city or town or somewhere. <laughs> Got some warming up to do. When I started riding trials, it was like the birth of MSN Messenger or something. And I remember, I can remember um, messaging on a Friday night and saying, right, tomorrow we're going to go to Liverpool. And writing, so you'd wake up on Saturday morning and it was raining, you'd be gutted. It was just like, you know. So you end up, you just either you wouldn't go and you'd have to just sit at home and be miserable or something, you know what I mean? I actually bought a bike from Chester. So I came, you know, I was looking for a new bike and I bought this bike and then all of a sudden it was, he just showed me this like indoor setup that I'd never seen or heard of. I started riding because I went to school with Joe and with another lad called Craig who doesn't ride anymore but he, um, he got a little mod that Lewis is riding uh, with the smaller wheels. I was round at his one day, had to go on that. I thought that was something I'd probably quite enjoy doing. I think it was a year later, my mum uh, got me a, a bike for my birthday and Christmas present and then that was it, like 2007. The first time I met Chester, I think I was actually I was back from uni for, uh, over summer 
and um, another lad, Brad, said, oh, there's a local lad from near you that's coming riding in Borough. Do you want to join a club out and ride and stuff? I said, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that's, that's the first time I ever met Chester. Brad had mentioned, actually, that, that there was a barn and he was trying to talk him into building some stuff. I must have gone away to uni, come back, and this was all built. It's perfect, like, especially during winter and stuff. Like, no one wants to go out and ride in the rain, and me and Chester ended up doing a bit of the, the Mary Poppins film down in London. It's not a big big role or anything, but it's still not many people can say of their, their hobby or sport or whatever has took them into a, like a Disney film. <laughs> It's nice because you can pick and choose. Say there's been like five iterations of the barn or ten or whatever. Like you remember a certain bit and you go, oh, we really, we always really like riding that, and we would ride that all the time. You can then add something similar in. So the the hook, the big rock lent against the pipe. That's something that we've had in in the past and that everyone enjoyed riding. We always use the same stuff: the rocks, the sleepers. And I think it's funny because like these rocks, I actually like know them as in like. We put them in different angles and you know the different sides of them. And like you leave the lads say, oh no, put it in using that side because that side rides better. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've never rode that. But they remember that they've rode that side better. So we try and set it up using the same sort of sides of rocks and things. Some of the rocks are pretty sketch. I mean, when we've had like ratchet straps around the, the forks and stuff like that, and they're like, some of them are a bit frayed and stuff. And you think, is that going to hold? Or it's, it starts slipping towards the edge of the rock and you think, is that going to fall off and crush them? <laughs> It's, uh, it's pretty scary sometimes, but it all works in the end, doesn't it? We were always messing around with straps and trying to lift things into awkward places. It's always these lot trying to, I know where things can go, and they always want it that little bit, I want you to balance that rock on that sleeper. I'm like, how? And then they do it and it's really good. It does work, because they'll say that's boring, like maybe change it a bit, maybe lift that up, and it does help having a bike there. It's just getting it and then, we always have to have a day trying to make things safe. Because of how close it is, we all just get together and build. I think we build in a way that suits the way we ride. I guess that's the beauty of it, really, because you can just pop down 10 minutes down the road and then, yeah, move a couple of things around. You've got the free rein. You can just build what you want. You know, the, the only limits your imagination and what you're doing and your, I suppose, the effort that you put into it, you know. Off, off like here, I can watch you do it. I, I think that's on, off here, to front there, pivot you back to there. Yeah. <laughs> I was riding in town with uh, one of the other lads called Flip. It was a wall, it wasn't even very big, um, done it loads of times, and my front wheel hit about the middle of the wall, <laughs> so I was like nowhere near. Uh, when the front wheel hit, it just dropped the front wheel down, um, and it, it sent me over landed on the corner of the wall straight to the chin. Uh, went in for x-ray and I had like three or four cracks down in this side of my jaw. Woke up the next day, had my, had my operation, had the, the plates put in, had that stitched back up. Bad day for you, I, I, I don't, I don't and envy you. It's hard, isn't it, when you're just watching? Shit. The worst bit is I feel like I could ride, but 
Yeah, it's not worth it. Imagine if I fell off. Like they yeah. said, I can't even chew because those plates will bend until it's until my jaws back together. I don't know. I guess a bit of the risk pushes you into. You want to see how far you can go sometimes, and you start doing things that you've you've never done before, or things that you've wanted to do in the past. You've seen other people do. So you just want to keep pushing, pushing, and see how far you can go. Just always trying to progress. Well, some like people wouldn't like to throw themselves on the floor like every Wednesday night without fail. And I come in, cuts and bruises, and covered in dust. But like we all love it. We all just laugh at each other on the floor. And like I think you have to be a certain type of character. So people say like you're you're weird or you're rough and tough or you just don't matter whatever it is. But we're all the same. We're all like probably a bit of an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> uh, there's a risk, yeah. There's a risk in every sport, isn't there? I suppose you just you love what you do, so you just carry on doing it. I suppose. <laughs> There's been a lot of stuff, I mean, there's been some good falls in here as well, like I've had stitches in my elbows and all sorts, so... I always remember the crashes, there's been, and like laughing, I just remember laughing at... When someone falls off and it's obviously, you, you start laughing and if they hurt then it's like, oh, well, you know, this isn't good, but there's been some, just so funny, just laughing and laughing if someone's done a, like a funny crash and... I think on a mountain, like, say on a mountain bike, you could expect to go out and get a couple of punctures or maybe a bearing goes or you snap a lever, he's like 20, 30 quidders. Well, we could have rides and you'd snap your bike in half. There's only a couple of uh, companies in the country who sell bits. You can't just go to a mountain bike shop or something like that and get parts. It is hard to get all the stuff. I haven't even got any catches or anything. Here, see that one? It's been a little bit of a fix a puncture anymore. <laughs> I'll fix it. No. <laughs> What's the most outrageous thing you've seen in the barn? The most outrageous is probably Chester blowing his fingers, <laughs> blowing the tops of his fingers off. That was a uh, that was a pretty weird day. Oh God! Years ago, just I don't know, riding. Like we did ride stupid amounts of times a week, and then rolled my ankle pretty badly off a sleeper and hospital jobby and just big swollen and a few ligament like no broken bones or anything but just on crutches rest it for a month or whatever it was and then the following weekend bored because I couldn't ride today I'm watching them all ride now I'm crutching about trying to do some parkour on my crutches and messing on them I had these firecrackers I tried to put one in a concrete pipe and then before I could put it in the concrete pipe it just went bang in my hand I've never had an ambulance to the barn actually and we never we never have but, like which would but we were shouting to call an ambulance that day we were like, everyone getting ambulance, blood all over. So I got rushed to A&E and some of the biking lads had to down tools and find my finger ends for starters in the dust, clean them off, get some ice from the freezer, which my mum was mortified by, and race to hospital and follow me. It was pretty bad. It was the worst thing that I've like seen. Like I've seen some bad injuries. It was the worst thing I've seen injury-wise happen, and it was to myself, so it was pretty bad. And then I tried loads of different setups, and then like, Joe helped me, Joe's bike mechanic, so that helped me. like tweak my brakes because I haven't got like the end of my finger to pull the brake, pull the lever in and loads of different things. But I tried all sorts, I tried like European ride and swept the levers around and that ended in disaster a few times, so. I mean, he's done a good job with his fingers, like they still work, he can still ride his bike and stuff. Can you, <laughs> wedge that, be upright or not? Done it. The rock? Did it, mate? Oh, you did? You did. Already done, mate. Sweet. Because I was saying I wonder if you can wedge it or not. And again. Don't stick you one, do it again. Do it again. I no. see. The things that I remember the most are the ones where someone's gone for a line and it's just magic. Like, the, against all odds, some magic's happened and everyone goes like, oh my God, I can't believe this just happened. And then, and you'll never, you'll ne no one will ever understand, no one will ever believe that it's happened and or, or said it. and. Sometimes you'll do a move and you're like, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? No one saw it as well. That is the that is the worst bit because obviously you want, you want it recorded because it's something you think is worth recording in, in the first place. The first person who does a bit of legend about like, where well, he did go up there and he well, he didn't. And I'm like, well, I was here and you weren't. And someone's been up there and they're like, well, it can't be done. And I'm like, well, they have done that. Because I set most of it up, so I'm thinking, I set that up. So you could go from here to there. I didn't think about you going over there and they've done it. And they've done things that I didn't even want them to do or think, that would even be possible and they'd do it, do it. And that's what I think is great about because they find stuff. And I've, I've seen some great stuff that I think, like that wasn't to go up and they've gone up it. You don't capture much of it on film really, which is a shame, but. It does become, as you say, a bit legendary.
location wise obviously it is a bit special in comparison to wherever else you go because there is nothing like this you know people got to have a go to the barn if someone says the barn they know it's here <laughs> um, it, it's just the way it's, it seems to have happened over the years it's like a pub without drink we just talk shit all night it's good it's like a big social I try and explain and just say when the weather's bad, you've got nowhere else to go, but then it didn't become when the weather's bad. Even like now the weather's gorgeous, but we're just still coming here because it became that good of a place to ride. It was just like, we'll just meet there. I mean, there isn't, there isn't many places that, uh, that has this amount of riding in such a, a compact area. Usually if you go ride street or whatever, you've got to travel between spots all the time. It's nice sometimes to just come somewhere and not have to go anywhere. You put pictures on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, videos or whatever, and um, people go, oh, looks really good there, it looks interesting, can we come up, whatever. So shoot a message over to Chester and obviously he's, he's a friendly guy, he's going to let people come and ride, so. It's only now I've, I'm older now, I've realised that even if a beginner comes here, you're, you're like, welcome them. You're not, you, I would just think, oh, I don't want to ride with them, they're like really good, but when you even like, I would welcome beginners to come here and just more people to ride, so. I don't need to be anymore. It's like, do you want to come to the barn and get yourself there? There's not really another sport you can compare it to. I mean, if I could ride trials as a full time job, I definitely would. It's, it's always been a massive part of my life. Maybe not so much recently, but you know, it allowed me to do some really interesting stuff. You know. It's what I love doing, so if I could do it full time, I definitely would. Uh, I don't think I'd be riding now for another barn. But just a bunch of lads who love riding the bikes, I suppose. <laughs>